Hello, my name is Anakin and uh, in today's Lockdown Diaries, I thought I would tell you a little bit about um, how I submit designs to magazines. So I do do a lot of designs to magazines. Um, I had my first design published by a magazine in, I think it was 2007. Uh, and since then I've had patterns published in magazines here in the UK, in a German magazine, in several American magazines. Um, knitting and crochet magazines um, and I've also designed for quite a few different yarn companies both here and in the and in the US and I have um, contributed to a few books in the US as well so I'm probably here as well actually and I've written two of my own books um, but I do have quite a lot of um, experience in submitting to magazines uh, Magazine designs was kind of how I got started designing. That was kind of my main focus for the first few years. My first few designs were self-published. The problem is when you are a new designer, um, people aren't going to buy patterns if they don't know you exist. So uh, when I started 2007, uh, I actually started before Ravelry um, came about. So when I first started uh selling online patterns i was actually selling through etsy but they didn't have like an automatic download system so you i had to every time i got an order i would manually email out the pattern to people um and then ravelry ravelry came along and it became a lot easier for designers to sell their patterns directly to knitters but people aren't going to buy your patterns unless they know you exist so when i first started um, I had no experience as a designer. I didn't really know how to market myself. It was before Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, so all I had to market my designs was a blog. But again, people aren't going to read your blog unless they know you exist. So I thought a good way of trying to get my name out there was to uh, focus on magazine designs. So I submitted a design for an online publication and it got commissioned. Um, and then a after that was published, I submitted two more designs to the same publication, but the lady who was running it was starting a print publication. So she asked if she could use uh, them for that. And I said, yes. And then I got to know somebody who lives locally to me, who uh, was designing for several British magazines at the time. And um, she put me in touch with a couple of editors. So I then got started getting the ball rolling or getting into different magazines. And once you get kind of started getting into magazines it gets easier um and then i started submitting to american magazines and then the ball just sort of kept rolling from there really so i do self-published patterns as well of course but i do do a lot of magazine designs so for the last couple of days i've been working on some new magazine designs so i by tomorrow monday I have to submit, I actually have three different magazine submissions I was working on. Um, I started working on one of them a couple of days ago and I knitted all the swatches for that Friday and yesterday. And then I did the sketches and stuff yesterday and now I've just pulled all those to get all that together and sent it off. The second magazine I've knitted nearly one swatch. I'm going to knit the rest of the swatches this afternoon and this evening. And then I'm going to send that off tomorrow morning. The third magazine is an American magazine. And I just found out yesterday that they've actually quite announced a very big change to their um, publication schedule. So instead of having five issues a year, they're going down to two issues a year. And I don't know how that's going to affect their deadline, um, which is tomorrow because they haven't told us that. So I decided, because I hadn't started working on it, I decided that I wasn't actually going to do that. Um, I think I haven't got enough time to do it. It's going to be too much pressure. And because I don't even know whether the, the mega issues they're um, commissioning for or asking for designs for, whether they're even going to happen. So I've decided I'm not going to submit to that one. So I've just got one more to do today and tomorrow morning. So I thought I'd just tell you a little bit about the process and how I do it. Now, um, first thing I do, I, I can't share with you the swatches that I've just knitted for this magazine submission because obviously they're secret. Um, but what happens is most magazines will um, either have a public call for designs or they'll have a list of designers that they work with 
uh, that they will send out designs to or they will have a mailing list of designers who are interested in working with them. So the first thing you need to do if you're interested in designing for a magazine is to check on their website if they have some kind of call for designs. Maybe if they have a Ravelry group, they'll post details there or just email them. You'll probably find their, the editor's email either on the website or in the magazine itself. Email them and um, ask them, say you're interested in designing for them. It's useful if you've already designed something so you have something you can show them. Obviously that is very difficult when you're new, but even having like a couple of self-published designs, even if they didn't sell very much, is at least you can show them that you've actually created something. And then um, get on their mailing list. They'll either email out a general call for designs for one or more issues. Um, some do one issue at a time, some do six issues at a time. Uh, it just depends on the magazine. Some editors, are a little bit more casual and we just email the designers they like working with and say I need something for this magazine can you send me some ideas um some of them will just have a very general I want I don't know cardigans or I want lace sweaters or whatever some will have kind of specific themes laid out with in like a pdf or a pinterest board or something like that um so find out what they're looking for and then um, I'm not very good at sketching, so I, I always start by thinking it through in my head and then coming up with an idea in my head. Sometimes I will just draw like a very rough, rough line drawing in my notebook, but most of the time I'll then start charting out um, stitch patterns. So I have a notebook, A5 squared spiral band notebook. I buy this in Spain because I find it difficult to get squared notebooks that are spiral bound here in the UK but every supermarket and um, uh, bookshop stationery shop in Spain sell them so I used to buy the A4 ones and uh, now I prefer the A5 ones so every time we go to Spain because we do go quite often I buy three or four of these books and bring back um, and what I do is I'll show you I'll just chart out different stitch patterns um, just, I'll just chart out different stitch patterns. I, I'm not always so good at labelling them. <laughs> um, so I don't, sometimes I'll flick through and I'll see a stitch pattern and I think, have oh, I used that for anything recently? I can't remember. Um, but I try and label them with um, which publication and which design is for. So quite often I'll flick, sometimes I'll just go through my stitch, stitch dictionaries and just chart out different stitch patterns or I'll just sit down and kind of like... Um, brainstorm different stitch patterns so sometimes i'll just flick through my book and see if i have a stitch pattern in here already that's suitable if not i'll think about what kind of stitch pattern i'd like to do so this is one that i don't think got um uh, i don't think that this one got um commissioned i hope not <laughs> so this is a swatch i knitted last year sometime i think it was um so this swatch has to show the detail of the stitch pattern when i first started designing because i was so bad at sketching i used to sometimes knit a swatch that would show the shape of the garment as well so i would almost like knit the mini version of the front of the garment not that much bigger than this um but that was quite a lot of work so uh now i just knit a stitch pattern showing the uh design um so for example this isn't actually for a design this is for something else like that or let me grab something else to show you barrel swatch um, I have a couple of notice boards in my office that I stick them on after I've submitted them so once I've done that I get my sketchbook and I do some sketches and I am very very bad at drawing I cannot draw to for love and money I'm really really bad at it um, but they don't have to be that artistic I have a what's called the traveler style notebook it's a basically a leather cover that you can pop the notebooks in At the moment this is what i'm doing but i've used various kind of types of sketchbooks in the past and i just got to make careful i don't show you anything that's current so for example this is a notebook i got at edinburgh yarn festival it's the shetland wool week notebook from a few years ago and this is actually the swatch the sketch sorry i created for this swatch so I'm just quickly going to 
find a pen. It's got the name of the magazine I submitted it to, so I'm just going to cross that out very quickly because I don't want to tell you who I submitted it to, but it didn't get commissioned. So that's the sketch that I drew. So you can see that's very, very basic. Um, I use something called a croquis. Um, you can um, find various free ones online that you can print out. Oops, and I got another one. So what I'll do is I'll just put one of those under the piece of paper, draw around it to get like the shape of the body. And then I will draw my design on top of it and then I colour it in. Um, but I'm very, very bad at it, to be quite honest. My sketches are so awful. It's not good. Uh, once I've done that, I will then um, I then have a squared notebook in this same booklet. And I will draw out a line drawing of the design and I'll put the main measurements for the sample size, which for most UK magazines is a size 10. So I'll basically put in all the measurements of size 10. Um, and then I'll take photographs of all that. I just take photographs with my phone. So I'll photograph the swatch, the sketch, the schematic, and I'll upload that to my laptop. And then I will edit those on my laptop and then I'll open up a Word document. I'll write a short paragraph describing the garment, uh, any design details, any construction method details. You know, is it worked in the round? Is it bottom up, top down? Is it pieces? Is it set in sleeve caps? Is it whatever? Uh, so I'll write all those details in. Any other details like um, edgings, uh, what kind of button bunny has, um, details of the neckline, you know, anything I can think of, I'll put in there. But I try and keep it just like a paragraph or two, not huge amounts. And then I'll just make an, I'll write a, a little bit about the yarn I've uh, swatched in. So if I think the, I'll usually say I swatched in X yarn. So I can't remember what this was actually now off the top of my head, but say I swatched in, what's this ball? I've got a ball with yarn here. This is Yarn Stories Fine Marina 4-ply. So if I swatched in this one, I would just say I swatched in Yarn Stories Fine Marina 4-ply um, and I recommend using a Marina Wool 4-ply or Marina Wool blend for this design, something like that. And then I will open up a spreadsheet uh, that I use to calculate yarn amounts. So I will um, open up the spreadsheet that I have for calculating yarn amounts and I'll put in the uh, measurements of the sample size and then I'll measure my swatch, measure the width and the length of the swatch and then I've got a tiny little scale. I'll weigh it on that, I'll add those details to the spreadsheet that I have set up and then that will tell me roughly how much yarn I will need for the sample size. And I'll put this all in the PDF, I'll add photos of the swatch, of the sketch, of the schematic and I have started recently to try and remember I don't always do it but I try and actually chart out the stitch pattern and include um, that as well and um, I don't always do it depends on how much time I have if I'm a bit short of time I don't always chart out the stitch pattern and what has happened more times than I really want to remember or admit to is I will get a design commissioned and then I will flick through my notebook in panic, try to find the stitch pattern that I used, and then I can't find it. So then I'm sitting there with the swatch and I'm trying to work out what I did from the swatch. Um, and that's just not much fun because I haven't labeled the swatch, the, the chart in here and all that kind of stuff. So and sometimes I will submit a design to a magazine and it won't get commissioned. Um, like for example, this submission I worked on today, I was submitting for two issues. So I submitted three designs for one issue, two designs for the other issue. Um, I'm probably, if I'm lucky, I might get one commission for each issue. Issue. I may only get one commission for one issue. I may not get anything commissioned. So I could have spent hours working up ideas for five designs. To if I'm lucky, get two commissioned. If I'm not lucky, I could get zero commissioned. Um, so I could have done all that work for nothing, really, or most of that work for nothing. So quite often, 
if I get asked to the submitter magazine particularly if I have a lot on I don't really have time to work on new designs sometimes I will go through my folders on my computer and see if I have any designs I've already commit submitted elsewhere but which weren't commissioned that I can submit um, sometimes I've submitted stuff three or four times before they get commissioned so after a design is rejected or not commissioned because sometimes it's not rejected it's just not commissioned um, and it may just be because it doesn't suit that issue or the editor's vision for that issue. It might be a perfectly good design and the editor may even like it. It doesn't fit what he or she needs for that particular issue. So um, sometimes I will submit it elsewhere if I still like it. Sometimes I look at it and I think, no, I've gone off it and then I won't submit it. Um, but quite often I'll submit it. So it, I have found that I have sometimes submitted something that's been commissioned like say two years after I first came up with it and then when I go and grab my notebook and try and find the stitch pattern it's an old notebook that is somewhere in my office I don't label these I don't have to keep them in order I'm not that organized when it comes to my notebooks I really should be um and then I'm really struggling to find the right chart so I'm trying now to be good and chart up all the design all the charts in the software that i use i use a software called stitch mastery um, it is the best charting software for knitting um, stitches you can do color work um, lace cables knit and pearl brioche estonian stitches um, and beads and you can also create your own um, symbols in there your own stitches so it's really really versatile and really really useful and relatively easy to use i'm not very good when it comes to learning new software and i really like it so once i've got all the details pulled it all together i put it all in a word document and try and keep it to one page but occasionally it might go on to two pages but i try and stick to one page and then I'll email it up. Then I turn that Word document, I publish it as a PDF, and then I email that PDF off. When I first started designing, some magazines wanted me to actually send in physical submissions. So I would uh, type up my ideas, um, description, yarn details, all that kind of stuff. I would print that off on an A4 piece of paper, and then I would get my swatch, um, and I would put it into a, a plastic pocket and um, send it in the post. Um, luckily, most magazines don't work like that anymore. Most actually accept email submissions now, which is so much easier, uh, especially when you're submitting to magazines abroad because shipping stuff to the States to get it there for a specific deadline used to be quite stressful. And I'd always worry that it wouldn't get there in time or it cost me a lot to ship it to make sure it got there in time. And then I may not even get anything commissioned. So I'd spend all that time and money um, and get nothing from it. So one thing I would say if you're going to submit stuff to magazines is that you have to get used to rejection and you must not take rejection uh, personally. Just because they don't like a magazine doesn't mean that it's no good. Um, it's just that it doesn't fit their vision of what they're looking for. So just because you get rejected, it's not that they don't like you uh, or they don't like your designs or that you're a rubbish designer. And I've submitted stuff to magazines and been really desperate to get published by that magazine and been really upset when I've got an email back saying, sorry, we don't, this isn't suitable for this issue or I've not heard anything back at all. Um, some magazines, most magazines actually, will probably only tell you if they're gonna use your design because they don't always have time to email you to tell you they don't want to use your design. Um, one mag one this magazine group I work for, they publish several magazines and quite a few books. They will hold on to magazines. If they don't want to use it for the issue that you've submitted it for, they will hold on to it and then they might use it for something else later on. So I have had several occasions with them where they have emailed me up to two years after I've submitted something and say said we'd like to use this design that you submitted ages ago. <laughs> um, and the first couple of times that happened, if I didn't hear for like six months, I might submit the design somewhere else. And then suddenly I get an email from them saying, oh, this design is submitted 18 months ago. We'd like to use it now. 
and I go, uh, well, it's already been published by someone else. Um, so now when I submit to them, I don't resubmit those designs anywhere else ever um, because I've learned my lesson. But most magazines will get back to you fairly quickly and tell you which mag designs they want. want. And you can always email them and say, I submitted something a, week, a couple of weeks ago, a month ago, a couple of months ago. I just want to make sure you don't want to use it so I can submit it somewhere else. So if you have any questions about this, please feel free to ask below this video. I'm happy to answer questions. Um, I'm not saying the way I do it is the only way to do it, um, but that's the way I do it. And I have been published um, by loads of magazines. I've had several hundred designs published by magazines now. So I've got to be getting something right, even though my sketches are awful. Um, that is one thing I really need to work on is to learn how to do better sketches. Um, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this slightly different, slightly longer episode of the Lockdown Diaries. Um, I'm going to go. It's Sunday afternoon. Um, it's sunny outside and it's quite warm. The sun's streaming in through my office and it's quite warm in here. So I'm going to go and sit in the garden now and knit some more swatches for the next magazine submission that I'll be working on tomorrow morning. So thank you very much, much for watching and I'll see you next time.